Welcome back to the Marching to Madness College Basketball Podcast. And I have my good friend Pete Gillen on here from CBS Sports Network. Coach Gillen had 392 wins with a 63.9% winning percentage at Xavier, Providence, and Virginia. Coach, welcome back. Thanks, Ken. Great to be with you. I got a lot of admiration for all your hard work in this basketball world. Thank you, sir. And and me as well with you, because uh, if you watch college basketball, you see Coach Gillen uh, on CBS Sports Network and often at the table on there. Coach, do you like being at that table where you can just, you know, pin your opinions? Yeah, I'm fortunate. You know, we do a bunch of games, Ken. As you mentioned, I do some studio work, too. Not a lot, but... Uh... I, I've done a couple already in New York City. I have another one coming up at the end of December. So I like the studio work, too. I coach mm-hmm. better, you know what I mean, when I'm there on the sidelines away from the bench and uh, on the arena and in the studio. But uh, I enjoy doing it. Uh, it's something that I love. So I'm very fortunate to be still close to the game. I got my toes in the water, and it's fun being part of it. There you go. Hey, you know, it looks like right now there are a lot of solid matchups across college basketball, interconference, and it looks like maybe there's more equality uh, among teams uh, after one month of play. It's not just the top six conferences that are going to dominate anymore. Right. No, I think there's more parity. Uh, I think, Ken, there was more upsets early in the season than ever before. There's always a bunch. But this yeah. year, I think there was really a ton, even more than ever before that I can remember. And the reason, as you know, is the transfer portal. Young men are going and women are going, you know, down lower level or going up. Uh, so the transfer portal is, is unbelievable. And I think the high school kids are being under-recruited. They're undervalued. A lot of these high school young men, people want instant fix, instant coffee. So they mm-hmm. go the transfer portal. Some of these high-quality high school young men, Instead of going to, say, the Power Five Conference, they're going to the mid-majors. And they're mm-hmm. going to, you know, Florida Gulf Coast, or they're going to Stetson, or they're going to Kent State, or, you know, these, um, you know, quality mid-major two schools, and they're beating the big guys. So mm-hmm. uh, it's really uh, like the wild, wild west, Ken, more than ever before, because what's going on now with the, the transfer portal and the NIL, et cetera. Discuss some games you've seen this year and who may have gotten your attention as you sit there, you know, courtside and, and do the color commentary. Well, Creighton really impressed me. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're in a downtick now. <clears throat> They've lost four in a row, but uh, I think they're a very good team. Uh, last night they got beat uh, uh, by BYU. Or the other night, I think it was Saturday night. Uh, mm-hmm. They play without their big center, their All American candidate, Kalk Brenner. Hopefully really. they'll be back. Uh, they play. Tonight, he plays tonight, Corcoran. So <clears throat> hopefully he'll play tonight against Arizona State. But, uh, yeah, they, they've lost four. So they got me attention. I had their game early in the year when they played Holy Cross in Omaha, Nebraska, where, the, where uh, they're located, where Creighton's located. So they impressed me a lot. Auburn, we talked briefly before our show began. Uh, Auburn's very athletic, very talented. Impressed with them. I think they do a nice job. I think Northwestern. It's a shame with Northwestern, they lost two quality big guys, as you know. One young man went to North Carolina, Nance, another another guy uh, went to uh, Duke, I think Young. So they lost two big guys, six, eight, six, seven. And uh, to go along with their guards, they could have been a really quality Big Ten team. They still can, but they lost two good big guys that went to the transfer portal. Right now, uh, last time I saw, they're both starting for Carolina and Duke. So... Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Northwestern, I think, is, is competitive. They have good guards. Uh, I was impressed with them. Um, so those are the, the ones early in the season. I'm trying to think who else. Uh, I saw George Washington play, and they're a solid you know, team in the A-10. Um, so coach. I, I think it's uh, it's still early, and anything can happen. But I think, as you mentioned, there's more parity. And I don't know if there's a one super team. I don't know about that right now. It's early. Uh, yeah. It could be Purdue. could be Virginia. But I, I don't know – I think there's a lot of very good teams, as you mentioned before, but maybe not one superstar team. <clears throat> sure. Uh, you know, you talk about Auburn, you saw in the SEC, it looks like there's more depth in there, as this may be a five-team race between Auburn, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Arkansas. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? And then Mississippi State has gone to 9-0 and with a really good defensive team in Chris Jan's first year. 
Yeah, he, Chris is an outstanding coach. Mm -hmm. You know, he's an assistant to Greg Marshall for a while. He's a successful coach, you know, uh, at Wichita State for a while. So, yeah, Chris is an outstanding coach, came from New Mexico State. So, <clears throat> they're a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, the SEC is loaded, great athletes, excellent coaches, tremendous intensity. So, that is a, a terrific. I think last year they got six teams in the uh, – in the big dance, I think next year they could even get more. So uh, that's certainly a, a terrific conference, one of the best. I think the best one, though, right now, Canada is close. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is the Big Twelve. I think mm -hmm. they they are uh, really good. Only ten teams, so there's not too much people at the bottom that are, you can beat up on. Uh, <clears throat> so they're really good, you know, with Texas, with Kansas, with Baylor, with you know, they're they're a very very good team. TCU is an outstanding team. Oklahoma yeah. is good. So, and once again, they don't have teams, you know, like uh, SEC has 14 teams so without mentioning the team. Some of those guys at the bottom, you know, sure. you can beat up on and, you know, get well. But uh, yeah. both great leagues. SEC is a great league, and so is the Big 12. Yeah, the Big 12. Uh, Jamie Dixon's done a good job at TCU coming in and setting down his program. Uh, and, and everybody, like you say, uh, you, you're going to see Kansas, you're going to see Baylor, you're going to see Texas, but I'm going to throw TCU in the mix for the uh, Big 12 title. No question. They play great defense. <clears throat> they got Mike Miles Jr. He's a tremendous guard, so they got mm -hmm. a chance. They're athletic. They're deep. They block shots. A lot of guys back from last year. I think maybe all five starters are back. <clears throat> yeah, so they are. They're, they're very good. They got a chance to win the, the, the regular season title. They lost to Texas Southern, as you know, but one of their players, I think Mike Miles Jr. didn't play. One of their Top guys didn't play, so <clears throat> that that uh, added to their uh, upset loss. But uh, I agree. I think TCU is going to be right there at the end. What's your take on the ACC? It seems like Virginia, Virginia Tech could be the favorites right now, actually. And and it looks like maybe a five to sixteen uh, group going forward to win, you know, the conference championship. Definitely, Virginia's going to be right there. <clears throat> They have one of the oldest teams in the country. A lot of those five starters back. Tony's a great coach. Uh, mm -hmm. They really uh, play outstanding defense. Gave up like 61 points a game last year. Top in the ACC, six in the country. So the defense travels well, as you know, defense travels. Mm -hmm. So they'll be right there. Virginia Tech's outstanding team. I saw them play the other night, uh, and they're very good. Uh, you know, they do an outstanding job. Uh, so I think those two off the top, Carolina, unfortunately, um, you know, they've lost four games, which is stunning. You know, two out in Portland in that tournament. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it's surprising that they've been struggling so much. I think they'll get better, but I don't, I don't think they'll be the champs. I think Virginia, Virginia Tech, as you mentioned, and Miami. Can't forget Miami. them. I watched them the other night. Uh, mm -hmm. When you were sleeping, Ken, I was working, and I was watching them. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, no, you know, I, I watched uh, Miami, you know, play. <laughs> I watched Miami play uh, against NC State, and Miami's got an outstanding team. You know, they got a lot of their guys yeah. back. Tremendous guards. Uh, they shoot the three well. Uh, Jim Laranega, veteran coach, has had wonderful success. So Miami, I think, is in the mix for the title. But I, I'd go with Virginia uh, uh, by an eyelash over Virginia Tech. But uh, I think those three, my mind, at the top of my head, are the, the top teams in the ACC. Yeah, I was going to mention Miami. And, and, and you know, I was sleeping when you was working. That's I'm just, just kidding, Ken. <laughs> You're a great That's American, a and you outwork everybody. That's a, nah, I don't know about that. Uh, you know, but I, Miami's a team I think that could play their way into the ACC title. And my opinion is Isaiah Wong, at a, like a two guard, is as good of an all around player as you're going to see in the ACC. He's good off the dribble. Uh, you know, he's a great passer, great outside shooter with the three. Uh, and then they've got North Chad O'Meara, who came on as a transfer from Arkansas State. It's six seven two twenty. Yep. He's a force in the middle. Yeah, no, he's terrific. I was impressed with them. They went, they got down big against NC State on Saturday. Came back and won the game. So, and NC State's good. They're much better than they yeah. were last year. So, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, Miami's going to be right up there with Virginia, Virginia Tech. I think those three right now. It's early yet. Things could change mm -hmm. with injuries and. Kids, you know, stepping up. But I think those three are the favorites for the regular season title in the ACC. Coach Houston lost to Alabama Saturday. But, you know, I think the Cougars are a deep team and are as well coached as anybody in the country by Kelvin Sampson. They feel like they may be deeper 
than eight players on that roster. Yeah, uh, Kelvin is an unbelievable coach. I was with him at USA Basketball. We we're both on a committee to help pick the teams for the Pan American Games, the Goodwill Games, the World University Games, you know, the, the medium level, not the Olympics, but, you know, the uh, other uh, USA national teams and got to know him real well. A tremendous coach. He's really uh, basketball 24 hours a day. His family's involved with it, as you know, his son. You know, yeah. is, is there with him, assistant. His daughter works at the university in marketing and his wife helps out. So they're really uh, invested in uh, – he's a, a great, great coach. I was surprised because they had the lead. I didn't watch the game much, just the flipping around. But uh, they had the lead, and then Alabama got hot at the end the last 10 minutes, and, and, and one hit some three. So, uh, But they're, they're playing Virginia coming up, so that should be an outstanding game. Houston at Virginia is coming up pretty soon, so that should be a good game. But he'll be right there at the end. Uh, Sasser's a great player, their, their guard. Uh, now, can they score enough, you know, when they get down to the Elite Eight, Final Four? We'll see, but they're certainly in the mix for the national championship. Yeah, totally. Uh, now, I was going to ask you about UConn because right now they're 11-0 and, and and the Big East is upcoming. Adama Sinogo and uh, then the Klingling kid are 6-9 and 7-2 inside. And defensively, they hold their opponents now to 38.5% from the floor. Yeah, he's done a great job. Ken, I saw them practice early in the year. You were on your yacht somewhere, vacationing. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I saw them practice. I'm just kidding. No more for this last one. But no, I, uh, keep, keep doing he, it. That's good. <laughs> he, I saw them practice and uh, very impressed with them. Uh, I didn't know they'd be 11 0 in all candidate schedule. You know what I mean? They played out in Portland, played great, won three big games, but, you know, they played a lot of, you know, low-level, mediocre teams, so that, that has helped them, but uh, they're certainly a top-10 team. I like Danny Hurley a lot. I know him a long time, uh, and uh, they got an outstanding team. So, no go, preseason player of the year, the Big East. Uh, he's terrific, uh, you know, and uh, they got a, a real good uh, real good team. A guy named Jordan Hawkins. Remember, that name's a sophomore. He's about 6'5". He scored like seven points a game last year. This year, he's I'm not sure, but I think he's getting 15 or 16 a game. He's outstanding. The other big freshman is terrific. Uh, so they got a, a tremendous team. Danny coaches them up really well. Uh, so I, I think they they got a chance. Certainly Creighton was picked preseason to win the uh, Big East title. But uh, I think UConn is right now is a little better. But that should be a, a tremendous battle when UConn plays Creighton. Oh, definitely. Uh, and I think Villanova's kind of, I don't want to say starting over, but they're having to rebuild a little bit early and they may get better and create their own picture deep into the big East season. I think they will. I think Whitmore did outstanding freshman was hurt, missed a few games. So that hurt mm -hmm. Villanova a lot. You know, they uh, lost three games out in the, uh, you know, the Phil Knight classic, the Phil Knight invitational. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, they're starting to come around now. Whitmore's playing. He's a, a great, great player, freshman. So I, I think they'll be better. Uh, I don't think they're quite at the level uh, of UConn and Creighton, but I think they'll be in the mix, certainly being an NCAA tournament team. Uh, the transfer portal. If you were still uh, the head ball coach, as Steve Spurrier used yeah. to say, somewhere. Yeah. All right. you're, you're, you're a Southern football fan. I understand. I'm with you. <laughs> how, how would you use the transfer portal in coaching and recruiting? I would certainly use it for sure because you got to get old can and stay old. Those are the teams mm -hmm. that really do well most of the time. Now, uh, Purdue is an exception. They got mm -hmm. Edie as a sophomore. They got a couple of freshmen that are outstanding. Lawyer and Smith, two freshmen, young men. You know, yeah. when they're up there, they're right one or two in the country. Purdue maybe uh, coming out today, I think, the new, you know, a vote. But I think Virginia Purdue will be one of one of those teams will be number one. So, But <clears throat> I, I would – do which you know but you got to be careful the chemistry on the team you know what i mean mm -hmm. you're going to be able to you know uh, and i don't i didn't like running kids off i didn't do that so yeah. uh, i would certainly use it when you had need and talk to the team about it and make sure this young man fits you know he's got the character integrity you want talent of course because you're paid to win but uh, i would use it for sure now michigan state hardly uses it all tom is yeah you know what i mean yeah. and they got an outstanding team again but they might be taking a half step back because maybe they're not using it as much and I admire him not doing it, but I think you got to adjust with the times. The times now is transfer, and I think we're overdoing it a lot. But uh, you know, you know, you're only coaching a team for one year now. Usually, you have to yeah. coach. Oh, this year was good. Next year, hopefully, it'll be a little better. Next year, you no, know, 
you got the team this year, then you might lose four or five of your key guys. So you're only coaching for one year now, you know, for six, seven months. So it's a whole different mindset, I think, <clears throat> with head coaches. But to answer your question, I would use it, but I wouldn't go crazy with it. Maybe, you know, two a year, maybe something like that to see the fits depend on your need, how your team's doing and, you know, whatever. But you're worried about losing guys. So it's yeah. like a merry-go-round. People are jumping on, jumping off. Two other guys I don't think use it uh, as much would be uh, Tommy Lloyd now at Arizona because he's able to recruit internationally with, with a fervor almost. And then Mick Cronin, UCLA. All right. No, you're right. Good, good point, Ken. <clears throat> yeah, uh, certainly uh, at Arizona, you know, they had great – players going to Gonzaga from, mm -hmm. you know, Japan. They had guys from Poland. They had young men from Russia, Sabonis, you know, from Lithuania, rather, oh, yeah. you know, from all over. So, uh, and he's continuing that. I think Sean Miller at the end of his tenure there, he was going international. He brought some of those guys in too. So uh, yeah, some of the teams are, are doing that, you know, going international. I think you got to, you got to get a balance. You got to get, you know, the chemistry on a team. So, and then with the NIL, you know, the money, how do you, how do you divide that? keep the chemistry you know involved you, you do it equally or, or you know and then if the young men don't play well the guys that are given money for the nil they say what's going on right you know a car dealership i'm giving you know forty thousand. this guy hasn't made a jump shot since moby dick was a middle what am i doing <laughs> you know what i mean so it's, it's a lot of uh, moving parts ken in this situation and uh you know but uh you know and, you know some ucla once again that's a great brand i know mick cronin very well he was a little JV coach in Cincinnati when wow. I was the head coach at Xavier, running around, mm -hmm. scurrying around. And, uh, you know, he's worked his way up. It's an unbelievable job. <clears throat> and UCLA is such a great brand. You know what I mean? They get, they can recruit, you know, California got a million great players. So he get there or in the West coast. So, uh, but he'll, he'll do, I think he's got maybe one guy, but very rarely does he use it. And, uh, you know, once you got that brand, that name, maybe you don't have to use it as much, but, uh, I think uh, you know right now it's it's uh, it's a mixed bag, but it's it's uh, a, a lot of moving parts, a lot of juggling as a head coach, even more than ever before. Last thing, coach, uh, you know I want you to tell us some of your games that you have for CBS Sports Network and when they are just uh, you know coming up, and then how do you prepare for games? Well, good question. <clears throat> I first, how do I prepare? I, I usually watch uh, at least one film on each team, you know, if they're on TV, that helps me from getting a link, you know, doing stuff. And uh, I, I do some study in, you know, different magazines, uh, the Blue Book magazine, you know, which uh, Chris Dorch does it, you know, some magazines and I do some stuff with Ken Palm, but not too much. I'm not that cerebral, but uh, I do some stats, but, uh, you know, I, I, I call coaches that have played them. What's the, what do they do best? What is their weakness? I, I say, I'm not going to divulge what you say, but uh, so I do, a lot of preparation. I, I really, one of the things I love doing, I love preparing for a game. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I'm preparing when I was coaching, not quite as much when I was coaching, I'd watch maybe two or three films. Now I just watch mm -hmm. one on a team uh, <clears throat> or go see them in person. Like this year, I went to see Holy Cross in person. I was up in Massachusetts at the time. We have a little home up there, drove over an hour away and saw Holy Cross. <clears throat> I'm going to probably go see VCU soon in person. Uh, so it helps. I went to see Liberty in person. Liberty was down in, um, you know, down in uh, Cancun, Mexico. So I saw Richie McKay's team. Uh, and so that helps a lot. So I do a lot of preparation, you know, on the phone, you know, looking stats up, looking at, you know, Googling, the, you know, the points and everything else, a little bit of Ken Palm, not too much. So it's, it's a lot of preparation work, but I really love preparing for a game, you know, and, and yeah. you know, when you game on TV, Ken, the saying less is more. You can't talk too much. You can't give too much facts or stata, you know, data, you know what I mean? Or, you know, different, uh, analytics, you, people get the headaches. They have to put ice on their head watching the game. So I give some. I try to mix yeah. it up with my partner. I try to give some, some you know, good, you know, stat that's important. You know what I mean? Some good focus stuff. You know, tell stories and have a little fun. You know what I yeah. mean? But you got to be careful telling stories, having fun, because today you can't say anything. You say something wrong, you're you're the worst yeah. guy alive, dead, yet to be born. You're the worst. Sure. You know, so people can't wait to be mortified or horrified you know but I try to give substance good substance mm -hmm. that is quality for that game tell some stories a lot of time my partner will do most of the stories and you know have a little fun you know within the context of the game coach Pete Gillen one of the best coaches and one of the best college basketball analysts coach we need to pair you and Bill Walton up sometime that would be that would be a totally good 
two on two tandem. <laughs> Bill is unbelievable. I, I like yeah. watching him uh, perform. You know, he's funny. He's off the wall. You don't know what he's going to say. But yeah. uh, no, he does a he does a good job. He you know the, you know the conference of champions, Pac-12. I'm sure he, yeah. every time he says that, he gets paid. But uh, he's uh, <laughs> he, he's enjoyable. I, I I love watching him, and uh, he's fun. He does a great job. All right, Ken. Thank you very much. Enjoyed being with you. We'll catch yep. you up real soon.